All right, here we go. I'm Pat. Hey, I'm Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. How are you? I'm good. Was noticing the fact that our our episode deriding not football, not football, football, <laughs> not football, yeah. football. <laughs> Had more views than normal. <laughs> yeah, the other one that was a big hit evidently was about Dr. Phil. Um, well, I think that title spoke to a lot of people because everybody's like, oh my God, my mom does watch, watch Dr. Phil. <laughs> so. You know, I suppose, I mean, is that if we went with uh, just sort of altruisms with, with elderly and we just said, you know, my mom doesn't know how to work her phone or just certain things. Oh, yeah. Right, my mom is susceptible to Indian scammers. Yeah. Yeah, my mom keeps seven years worth of tax finance. Yeah. <laughs> my mom clips coupons. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the funny thing is, our titles always relate to like a 30 second segment or maybe yes. a five minute one time. Absolutely. Yeah, so you yes. got to kind of dig around to find it. It's not like the whole episode was about us bashing soccer last time. There was like a minute, maybe. I think it was, you know, we, we spent, it wasn't a significant portion, but it was, it was about how we were going to try, but it's just not going to happen. It yeah. just didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was listening to some of our back episodes and then there was this thing that I saw a while ago that when two, when two or more dudes get around a table and they run out of shit to talk about, they invariably talk about movies. <laughs> Apparently it's a, it's a, it's a podcast. What are you, okay. Yeah. So what are, what, what, are, what are you saying? What are you, is this just an observation or is this a, uh, we need to think harder, Homer. No, I don't think it's criticism. Man. Okay. So yeah. you and I have been doing this for 20 years. We've talked a lot of movies for over 20 years. It's just an observation. Well, fair enough. And I don't, it hasn't been too often where, where you and I have like met on a Tuesday or something and said, uh, hey, we're both going to go our separate ways, have seen this by this day, so that we can discuss it. It was just sort of a, no. you put it in the bank. Yeah, yeah, and if it came up later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or if you and I went to go see a movie together or something. So, yeah, that's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, been a while. Yeah, last movie you and I saw was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, was it? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, that was a good one. Yeah. Well, Patrick, to some... Mm, at the risk of criticizing, you know, fans of certain things, uh, in many ways, that was the last actual movie I saw in a movie theater. <laughs> yeah. He did punch the shit out of that hippie, too. <laughs> he did. He did. Um, but yeah, that may be the last actual movie I saw in a movie theater where um, they were concerned about, wow, oh, this needs to have a beginning, middle, and end. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't know. There's nothing bright on the horizon, man. So I'm just waiting for Drinker to rip into Avatar 2. So I don't know if he's going to. I actually heard some interesting reviews about it. Oh, people have already seen it? Uh, yeah, the screening was today. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I haven't looked into it yet. So uh, I didn't mean to. It just came up on something that I was watching, and uh, they were surprisingly positive. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, they said it was as flawed as any James Cameron movie ever was. Um, so, like, all of the things that you've disliked about James Cameron movies in the past are Being there. Three plus they're, hours long. He says they're all there, so you get them all. Got it. But at the, the same... set of knives and spoons. <laughs> <laughs> Those forks here, huh? <laughs> says that uh, the... Uh, that it is long, but you're not bored during the whole time, and it actually has an actual, meaningful, heartfelt message. Okay. About fatherhood. Okay, good. So, it's not just about Blue Panther people. <laughs> you know, how they're being oppressed by the, by the Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> 
They didn't, yeah, they, they, evidently there's not like a 45 minute pause to talk about Blue Panther pronouns or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, uh... Which they start with X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of that, man. Kanye West. What about him? Holy <laughs> fucking shit, man. I know we just barely mentioned him like last week, kind of in passing. He was like, man, poor Kanye. That can dude needs a hug. And now it's like, Whoa! <laughs> so, you know. Well, okay, so at first I was kind of like... I, I'm, I'm reading some of the things he says, and, and you know, there is a, a... I don't... Obviously, I don't endorse any of the things that he's saying, but there's a an angle of this that I can get to that I've seen in the past from other people in, in the... Uh, specifically the black community where it's like this was not knocked down it's not popular now but when they've talked about essentially the division between blacks and jews i've seen this before sure yeah okay. um a well, lot that's of this... the old shopkeeper old argument right well not the, the jew owns the grocery store so you know that's the problem because they're sucking money out of the community but there was a Jewish community before it was a black community, right? Is it is this the same argument that you're always talking that that, that I think you're talking about? Part of it, part of it also goes to like we've talked about, um, were the uh, were the Jews, you know, the ones the slave ship owners, the ones that, that oh, basically profited okay. off of off of slavery and stuff like that, and they 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 make the extension that. Um, They've been essentially using the black community as puppets for a long time, uh, especially in the entertainment industry, right? Right. Where, and look, there's a part of that where I can say, I don't know if I can blame, quote unquote, the Jews for this <laughs> uh, as much as I can blame the machine. Because, like, take, for example, um, if you look at the music industry or the entertainment industry as a whole, right, when they go out there and when they... When they basically asked me to walk away from hip hop and they basically soaked everything out of it that was interesting, they said, all right, so we've tested these things out. So in the 80s, it's like, okay, so we get the the urban message of this. And what people are really responding to is, we like that really violent thing. So turn that up to eleven, yeah, right? Yeah. So then you get death certificate. <laughs> yeah. Well, not even that, because that was that was legitimately honest, and and that was actually a break free from the the, the Jewish guy that was running that. That that's why those albums came out. But oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I don't that, know that. That was that was one of the the big reasons behind the split up of that group. Um, was because of, of the, the ownership of that. Who owned it? It say the Jewish guy. I don't remember his name oh, exactly, okay. but yeah, he was uh it was that. So it was like basically make a cartoon version of yourself. Right. Oh, okay. Now take that and then multiply it by the entire industry, right? Yeah, sure. So you're basically having these people say, uh you've made us into a cartoon version of ourselves. Right. So wait a minute. Who's talking about who? The Jews are a cartoon, or the black folks are? A cartoon? The black folks are saying that okay. you're using our culture, right? Yeah. Taking the parts of it that work, and then saying, uh, actually, black this up a little bit. Okay, right? I got you now. Double down on this. Double down on this till they become a caricature. Sorry, I wasn't tracking who the cartoon was. That oh, was my my apologies. Did. That's that's why um, some people have uh, basically compared. A lot of black entertainment to a minstrel show because of the people who own these things. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. So I've heard some of these arguments before, and they say this has been going on since slave times, blah, blah, blah. Right? Now, there's a line that you can't cross when you go that far. And that's when you say, like, well, I mean, there are some things I admire about Hitler. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so I saw that one, and then I saw the follow up that he, <laughs> you know, so that was just kind of like, um, really, I, I never thought that I'd actually see someone say that without about another five hundred years of history to go. You, you, exactly. Yeah. 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 And and that's the the troubling part is like, and this was the joke I made, um, where I said like, well, actually, his paintings were quite good, but everything else he did was shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, and he didn't draw any people either, if you noticed that. 
<laughs> He's got a lot of architectural drawings. All right, have little right. Script dudes, you know, yeah. <laughs> being chased by dinosaurs. <laughs> well, that really, I mean, I have that hanging in my house. It was like, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that's the you just like I said. As a matter of fact, that that whole argument that I was going after was the whole that. That was the Nation of Islam message for a long time. That was actually very popular for a long time. Uh, I'm not saying that it's right. You mean like the, the modern Nation of Islam, the 1970s and 80s guys? Well, but yes. So, so yeah, Farrakhan yeah. for Farrakhan, Farrakhan, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for me, it was like, well, this sounds like a, a recycling of that. This is just the, the wave of this coming back. But Farrakhan never said. Yeah, Farrakhan never said that. Is that motherfucker still alive? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I have no idea, and it wouldn't bother me if he were gone because Jesse Jackson died, didn't he? I don't know. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Well, he wasn't a Farrakhan guy, but yeah. No. no, I don't think he did die. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't think so, but yeah. So that kind of took me by surprise. I'm like, really? You're into this guy, huh? <laughs> He's playing some Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go gray team. <laughs> you know? like, I swear to God, I'm like, like he's going to put out another album and it's going to be called My Struggle or whatever. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> my Struggle, Defense of the Father. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, because if, if you... I don't know, Patrick, I don't know if basically breaking Nazi is a mental defect... <laughs> Breaking Nazi. Wow. Yeah, funny. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Is is like when you see, um, so, like if I were to compare this, the closest thing I could compare this to was the famous phone tirade from Mel Gibson, right? Oh yeah, about the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's something where obviously with him, there were probably a string of things that happened that made him jump to that point but i don't think it's their fault i i think most of that was alcohol or drug induced so like he can sit there and think about well this person was a jerk this person was a jerk this person ripped me off on this yeah. i think it's coincidental right right uh so much to the point but when you start going into a quote unquote the jews kind of yeah um, tirade you're 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 putting lines together that should not be drawn no man you're skipping several things where you have to connect the dots man so you're going from like one two three to 47. yes yeah. <laughs> yes and those dots have to be like well they know each other um they know you right there's some kind of collaboration right We're gonna they get meet this on guy. Off hours yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. they discuss you specifically yeah so yeah drinks were ordered <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's got to be a whole bunch of steps in there, man. So yeah, so if you if you go that way, I I can't say that for sure that mental defect is involved, but I feel like it certainly is in Kanye's case. Yeah. So yeah, no, that was that was kind of the surprise of my weekend. So I did not expect somebody to say that within my lifetime, especially publicly on a platform. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you can check that box off. <laughs> you know? I, do, I, I do. I If I were to, so what I want you to think about here is if you had a friend that suddenly, like this, started getting into, like, pro-Nazi ideology, right? Yeah. You would ask a question or two, wouldn't you? I, yeah, I think I would, but I'd hope I'd do it before he actually did something like that on Twitter. So, you know, yeah, right. in you, front of millions of people. You're supposed to have so. been able to, like, suss that out, like, before. Right, yeah. yeah. You think, you like, yeah. even all the conversations that we have, if I got any hint of Nazism coming from you, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right. You'd be like, let's talk off camera, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> well, unless it's I got like a this. book you should read. <laughs> or, or you're like, actually, uh, what we have to do right now is I have to do this out in the open so I can publicly denounce you. Well, I guess if you didn't take to the first conversation, then that one would be teed up. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine, like, you, I imagine, like, uh, uh, 
you and, and my other close friends would have the decency to hear that and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where's that coming yeah, where's from? that coming from? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what did you what did you what did you watch this weekend? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's like cite your sources, sir. <laughs> you know, we need to do some vetting here. <laughs> so yeah, no, that one was definitely out of left field, man. So um, I thought he was going to lay low for a little bit. So after that whole thing with Trump and dinner and stuff like that. But nope, he came right out swinging. <laughs> so. Yeah, but again, this was in conjunction with wearing like a handmade Superman costume. What? I didn't see that. Well, not Superman, but you know, the, the, the hooded justice thing oh, that, that yeah, he was okay. doing, you know, so. Is he going to kill himself? I can't answer that. Yeah, I don't know if I want to put odds on that one. I don't know. Right? Lest they become true. I don't true. know. Yeah. No. It just seems um, like somebody who's... Like, there's been public figures in the past who have absolutely imploded. And then, you know, six months later, we hear something along those lines. Or, you know, back in rehab or something like that. I don't think he actually has a drug problem. Though. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. I've yeah. never, I've never heard many stories about... Uh, struggling with addiction. I mean, uh -huh. you know, anything like that. So, uh, doesn't mean it's not true. Yeah. But yeah, there are guys that kind of go nuts and then disappear for a while. Fucking, uh, oh, yeah. Randy Quaid. Oh, and, Jeff and, Bridges, famously. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Just... Yeah, that's true. Randy Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he really came back. No, he didn't come back. Yeah. That's what oh, I'm saying. Okay. Is is yeah. just he's still there. He's still alive. Yeah. Um. He's just. I think you watch what you say around that guy. Like, right. Like at Thanksgiving, you talk about very base level things. You don't ever want to. You don't ever want to use like broad pronouns. Like you don't. You ever want to say like that's how they get you because then you're going to get an answer as to who they are. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They got very specific answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe a tribe. <laughs> it might narrow it down. Could be them. Yeah. Could be <laughs> people not right. of this planet. Could, could be, be right. Yeah. Could be people who blink sideways. Could be. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Human skins. <laughs> Human skins. Blink sideways. Yeah. Blink sideways. Yeah. <laughs> really fast. You got to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that guy. Um. I don't know him. It would be funny to spend an afternoon with him. Would it? I think so. I think it'd be excruciating after about 20 minutes. So every long-form podcast I've seen, and I've seen the three big ones that he's done, they get weird. So, you know, they, they get really, really weird. Tell me how. What kind of weird does he get into? He just goes into, uh, he, like, he, he's like the tangent master. So he'll take mm, you down a rabbit okay. hole that is just... Like, and then it's all, it's all like narrative, self-reflective stream of consciousness shit. <clears throat> it's kind of weird. So I, I, I dare you to make it through more than an hour of it, man. It's not easy. So, but then like it, it's interspersed with points where he's like really cool and reflective about things. Right. You know, right. so you right. know, that's kind of weird. Um, yeah. Well, this... so, I mean, the guy's obviously intelligent. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, so. It's incredibly creative and that, that kind of thing here too, which is right. It's it's sort of in many ways it's uh it would not be atypical for me to see people who are very creative have bizarre thoughts. Sure. Right? That's normal. I mean that's that's been a a, a function of art since art was a thing, right? right? Because yeah. that's that gives you a completely different perspective. I suppose for me the the difference between all this was that I was never in the position where I had to or even tried to previously hold him in the pantheon of some kind of philosophical genius okay. as others did. Yeah, right? So at that point, it's only like, well, I didn't see you as anything before, but now I see you as somebody who's, well, I'm just spouting Nazi rhetoric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's like putting a marble in the sink. 
go on. <laughs> Does it eventually go to that? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, because... I don't know. I don't know either, but if you think about <laughs> philosophy in general, the more that you get into philosophy, the easier it is to run into Nietzsche. So, which leads to Nazi. Yeah. So, it is just one of those things, man. So, because you start reading a little bit of it, and you're like, oh, this shit is good, you know? And then after a little while, you're kind of like, wait a minute, I think I know where he's going with this. You're like, nah, but then you arrive, like, separately at the same destination. So, you know, it's like, I can't read this anymore, man. I know where it's going, you know, kind of thing. So, but yeah, I wouldn't hold him up as a modern-day philosopher either, so... Well, yeah, I, I suppose you're right. It's the same sort of thing we say, like, oh, really, calculus was, was discovered at the same time on two different parts of the Earth. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so fascism is like... <laughs> right to fascism. <laughs> it's the way of nature. Yeah, I guess. Oh, well, it's, it's calculus. It's calculus. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I guess... Uh, Actually, that's an interesting thought. Huh. You know, if you allow me to interrupt, please. This one, modern day philosopher. That is, that is, that is something that's hard to pick out. No, I don't think it is. Well, who you got? I'm well, curious. You're gonna okay. So, the thing is, nobody goes by essentially, you know, philosopher. Right, right, right. But you're gonna find people whose. Uh, whose philosophies are constantly cited, right? So that's where you're going to get, uh, well, like your Jordan Petersons, where you're going to get... Uh, uh, ooh, yeah. I didn't say you like it. What I'm just saying is... is I, I, yeah, now I see where you're going with it. Well, and keep in mind, of course, like, like the whole thing about Jordan Peterson is there's nothing that he's saying that's really revelatory. It's just that somebody said it, right? Yeah, well, and he, he's... I don't know. I have my issues with him. So I think he does a good job when he stays in his lane. So, and he, sure. Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, but yeah, there's elements of him that are just kind of like. No shit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like my dad told me that. Maybe. I know. Yeah. That's, okay. what, that's what I'm yeah. saying is, right. is the fact that it's wrapped in somebody actually just saying it. Right. Yeah. Okay. In, in the TikTok generation. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I got you. Yeah. I got you. When, when his grand revelation, I mean, there are a couple of things where, you know, he goes on the tirade of, you need to clean your room. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, go on. Go on. It's already on my list, dude. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so you have that component. You have that component of, I mean, he does, there is another good point. The, the one that he, he makes that I, I famously agree with here is when he says, you know, if you don't like hanging around your kids... Right. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Right. And it's like, okay, well, if you want to hang around your kids, you have to mold them in a way that makes you want to hang around them. Right. Right. I'm like, oh, I see. I mean, that's a really shitty thing to think about when you're like, yeah, but my son's 17 now. Right. Yeah. That's a hindsight thing. But if you if you catch that early enough, and you're saying, all right, then I must adhere to. Uh, modeling principles yeah and if you at an early age right if you see it like if you if you read his his stupid book like um somebody gave it to you as a gift for you to read in the waiting room okay god <laughs> you can do that right yeah. it's just in hindsight that's just a it's not a helpful solution to people who have already who are reading your book because they're already in a bind yeah that's true so right well, and five, six years ago, he would have been pretty hard to find. So absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, but the, the yeah, there's there's way too much stuff in there. There's like, why are you doing it? Everybody knows this. Well, apparently not. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. And, and again, of course, the the other part of his that that I definitely do agree with is, uh, I guess I was like, well, finally, I've, I've met somebody that hates postmodernism as much as I do. Oh. Now, I yeah. get it. I get it. I, I understand that I dislike a certain aspect of it. Sure. And so it's not fair for me to label all of postmodernism as bullshit. Well, right? most of it is. It comes from the same. It comes from one guy. So. 
You were telling me that. You were Yeah, uh, that guy's was, pretty uh, scary. Who was that? Full call. He's like one of the most sighted guys. Oh, full, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. a scary dude. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's just... But, like, I actually had to read a chunk of his shit for some of my schooling. Oh, because, like, I don't know. I had to go through a philosophy phase there. Where it was like, well, sure. what's, what's your... What's your epistemological philosophy? So, how do you see knowledge in the world? You know, kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, no yeah, shit. yeah. you you had to do this for the education program. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah okay. kind of thing. And there are there's a lot of postmodern bullshit in education. So, so it's like more informative, like critical theory. Everybody got critical theory fucked up. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> do go on <laughs> it's just it's it's an, it's supposed to be an outside critique you're literally supposed to critique things from the outside it is designed to be provocative it is not designed to be necessarily instructive so that's all it does okay it says did you think about this motherfucker and the answer is usually no and i'm not gonna <laughs> no you're, you're right they, they're sort of like a uh it's it's almost kind of like three stone guys just sitting next to each other, and you're just kind of like, well, what if the universe isn't real? Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a neat idea, but I have to go on the assumption that it is because I have to be at work tomorrow. Oh, shit. Speaking of that universe being real, oh, fuck, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but oh, I, I, I saw a bang-up argument for why the universe is not a simulation. Oh, what's this? Oh, so I can't remember though, man. I'm gonna have to go back and look at it. <laughs> so, but you've heard the, you know, the entire universe. Yeah, so I've okay, heard right. many, many times. Okay, many yeah, times. I thought so, but you know, like I think Musk said that there's a fifty-fifty probability that that's true, kind of thing. I, I did come across an argument that said, no, nope, this is bullshit, and you can prove it in your kitchen, kind of thing. So I can't remember what it was though. Well. The arguments for it are generally all the same, right? Sure. I mean, is is certain certain things that almost seem like glitches within the universe, right. where you sit there and say, "All right, so why is it that the the closer we get to smaller things, they start to act strangely?" All oh, right, right. How is it that it's the same kind of thing? Like, what's okay. that theory? Oh well, that's just quantum quantum mechanics. Okay, yeah, but there's a specific thing. Well, there's a number. I think you know what I'm talking about. Well, there's a number of things in there that don't seem to make logical sense. It's the the idea that it's kind of like the dual slit theory. It's like dual slit. That's the one I'm talking. Where about. it's like yep. it's a wave or a particle, depending on if you're observing right. it. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the exact one I was thinking of. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and Patrick, I'm not even going to talk about it. Have you heard about quantum entanglement? No. So. Okay. So I want you to do this. Okay. Is this a Brian Green thing? No. Okay. No, I, I, I'm just saying, like, all right. So if you take a, if you take the smallest particle of something, right, uh -huh. you go down to an atom, and uh, you're going to separate the electron from the proton, the smallest pieces, essentially. And yes, you can get down to the the neutrons and everything like that, and and the quarks and all quarks. that other stuff, right? <laughs> but basically, so the the reason they go down to this is because uh, you know protons and neutrons are flipped, magnetic. Right, yeah. Okay. So the understanding of this, and they have been able to observe this, is that, okay, so if you're able to break these apart, mm -hmm. okay, and separate them by any distance, it doesn't matter how far the distance is. Yeah. Okay. If you change the polarity on one. The other will flip. Instantly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the distance in between is irrelevant. Yeah. Which should be theoretically impossible. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I have seen that. So there was a while there where I went on a kick. So on, you know, several podcasts. And, like, I actually got Neil deGrasse Tyson's book and read that. Oh, okay. So on this. And I, it's, so, like, particle physics is something that's just not going to click with me. I can see it already. So, because it, it does make my brain a little melty. But I, I, I find it interesting Sure. I just don't find yeah. it, you know, like, oh, okay, well, why don't you guys work on that and tell me about it later? Well, this is <laughs> kind of my yeah. thing. Okay, man. so here's, yeah. here's the thing, like, is so, much like you, the, the way I put this thing, it's interesting in concept, right? right? Yeah. But if I then sat down and Neil deGrasse Tyson gave me, like, a stack of printer paper and a pencil and he said, figure this out, <laughs> right? like, bro, my, my, my degree's in English, not math. <laughs> yeah. So you tell me what to write, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 
It's like, so, I don't know what all these things are. No, but I have always enjoyed that. In some oh, ways. sure, yeah. sure. Some yeah, ways. but if he says, like, so what does this funny-looking E do? Oh. It's like, idiot. Yeah, That's yeah. A, you're, you're supposed to know <laughs> That's this. That's an like. epsilon. It means some. <laughs> Why don't you just say that? <laughs> yeah. And then you call him back over. It's like, I think I get it, but what's this treble clef thing? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, what's this triangle mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> and then he just looks at me and he's like, you with this stupid look on your face, out. <laughs> out. Yeah. So, bring my car around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, man. Sorry. Yeah. So, but I don't know. I find something a little bit more interesting about those guys than I do about Jordan Peterson, just because he comes from psychology, which is such a fucking fist fight right now. Yeah, uh, I yeah. agree. I agree. I mean, well, and his specialty in particular is on personality testing, which is ninety percent bullshit. So, at the very least, yeah, subjective. That's a good way to put that's a very polite way to put that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we use this shit in management all the time, man. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. So, but it's just, there's nothing predictive about anything in there. So, I don't know, man. I, I did read his book, though, and you're right. It's, it's, it, unlike Neil deGrasse Tyson's book, where it's like, wow, neat, cool. I don't understand that. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. You know, Jordan Peterson's book was like, my dad told me that. Jeff's dad told me that. <laughs> you know? Don't get me wrong. Here, let me say this. Um, the whole purpose of this, and, and maybe this this is his point, is basically saying this is generational wisdom gone by. Yeah. Let me repackage this for you in a way where the data that I'm presenting supports it. Right. Okay. Which I get. Yeah, sure. But there's a part of that. It's like, well, then be upfront with that. Right? Yeah. This is, right now, there's a lot of things being attributed to you. Like, you're the first person that ever thought about this. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I saw an article today in NPR that was like that. So, <laughs> I, so I don't... Fuck, I, did you read on NPR? I don't like NPR <laughs> too much, man. But there was one thing that was on there today. It was like, woman gets out of debt by using cash. An envelope <laughs> system. <laughs> So you know the old envelope what? system that, like, I bet you your mom used this one. Oh, what? Okay? Okay, so this. Where, well, okay, so you cash your paycheck. Yeah. And then if you've got a budget, you split up the cash and you put it in different envelopes. This is the, the, the groceries envelope. This is the gas envelope, stuff like that. This system goes back a century, okay? And NPR was treating it like she had some kind of fucking TikTok shit figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Ramsey bangs on about this thing every fucking day. So, and I just saw that article today and I was like, you gotta be, yeah. And so it's the same thing, Jordan Peterson. It's like, it's just, you know, generational wisdom packaged in NPR so that the fucking TikTok generation will see it. You know, I guess, you know, <laughs> it was, it was, it, you know, oh, that, okay, I gotta, I gotta step the fuck off that because generational theory is bullshit. So, but anyway, that's, I, well, I mean, is there yeah. at least uh, an interesting spin on generational theory recently or something that... No, the two guys who did it basically died. <laughs> so, okay. well, one of them died and the other one's so old that it doesn't matter anymore. Mm. But both these guys were hack fucking historians. So one of them wasn't even a real <laughs> one. So, you know, who were basically trying... Well, one, I think one of them was a journalist, actually. So oh, there you okay. Go. Yeah. Who is trying to like you know find patterns in history and painting in really broad strokes? And if you dive into any of the actual criticism of that, every historian is like, "Ah, this book is cute," <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, but then it, it it got caught in the business lid of all fucking places. They're like, "Oh, this is how you deal with millennials," you know. And then it just became a huge fucking thing. And it's just it the cat is so out of the bag now, and like like everything I see now is like based upon. Well, at least in business, lit is there's it just constantly sells because oh, it's yeah. all about yeah. like oh how do you sell to Gen Z you know kind of thing. I was like, well, Gen Z isn't a fucking thing, okay? You're talking about young people, all right? So it has nothing to do with when they were born and how they grew up and stuff like that. Every young person has always felt that way from all the way back, <laughs> you know. 
So, so Pat, do you want me to cite you some Bible verses because they, they they there you go yeah <laughs> they they talk about how this generation has been lazier <laughs> get than... the fuck off my lawn <laughs> Jedediah <laughs> Dude, okay so yeah I, I'm a complete agreement with you and on top of that right this is you and I led with this before this even started right the problem I have with this kind of literature and this kind of idea is the whole selling point of this hmm. is based off of what can I do to not get to know people on an individual level? Oh, right, yeah. Right, because it comes down to, well, how do I talk to Gen Z? I'm like, well, invite one into your office. <laughs> Ask them if they want a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, right. They may say no, offer them something else. Right, yeah. Right? Um, and sit down and, and talk to them about what they're into, right? Yeah. Because then you start going into it and you start saying, like, oh, well, these guys... This is what's known as the TikTok generation. So they have very short attention spans. They're very interested, but for very short periods of time. So when you lay out their tasks for them, gamify it. Game Make sure that game. you... Oh, I hate that word. <laughs> Make fucking triggering me, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is radio, not TV. Yeah. So you, you didn't see Pat just kind of crumble in his chair. <laughs> yeah. like, I just, like I just took him back to the knob. Right, yeah. Uh, but... <laughs> I can hear the choppers, man. <laughs> but yeah, this whole thing is like, well, you gotta ga you gotta break into little chunks and gamify and have little rewards all through the day. Where you take someone into your office and, and you say, "Do you even like TikTok?" Like, no, I hate it, and I hate the people that use it. Oh, okay, great, yeah, great. I understand that because I asked you, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't just assume something about you. Yeah, this is the same. Yeah. Shit. There was a, a person who was on TV where oh, they weren't on TV. This was yeah, this was another internet thing. It just made the rounds a couple of days where ago uh, where it was um, another one of those things that I pick on the Hillary Clinton for, where it's like. <laughs> You need to. It was the weasel words involved. <laughs> Christ! It was literally about. Um, you need to lower your expectations when it comes to dealing with people of color. I was oh, like, that I, this is. Oh, it, and it was because of institutional racism. I'm like, okay, I got it. Mm. Um, you know, I have serious problems with what you're saying here. Yeah, and again. Do you know how you can tell who you need to lower and raise your expectations for? Uh, by asking them. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> by talking to them, by saying, here, I want you to do this test. And if they succeed or exceed on something, yeah. wow, I need to give you more challenging material. Correct. But theoretically, by this logic, when you see people. Oh, yeah. You judge them by the color of their skin and say, yep. well, I know it's old science, but the bumps on your head tell me that you're not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the shape of your eyes indicate that you're going to get an A. <laughs> I need to give you more work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this child has Mongol features. <laughs> He needs to be institutionalized, yeah. <laughs> Mongol features. <laughs> So yeah. Like, what the fuck? I was like, how did you guys turn... How did you guys turn fucking leftism into judging people on sight and deeming them inferior? Like, what the fuck happened to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> well, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't been watching, but I don't know exactly when that Supreme Court decision is supposed to drop. Which the, one? The, 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 the one they're, they're about to torpedo affirmative action. So, oh, the Harvard one? The Harvard yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that will actually kick out a lot of that. So, I hope so, man. Oh, it totally that's, will. That's all I can hope for. Yeah, it totally will. So I don't I don't know where they are on that run right now. So I know they're hearing arguments right now for a bunch of shit. So I don't think anything's due out till like February or March. So. I don't think they are. I know they have the one that is uh, basically... Uh, Gay Cake 2.0. <laughs> right, yeah. It's a uh, <laughs> gay website. <laughs> what the fuck, like, What are we doing? Are we doing a redo here? I don't know. So, what, what did we miss about the last time? Yeah, right? exactly. How is this so, any different? I, I don't understand why the basis of it is different. I uh, To be fair, I just heard about it on the radio. I haven't even been watching the Springboard okay. that carefully this year. 
So, I mean, they hit the big one, you know, the, the Roe versus Wade in the, in yeah. the summer. And yeah. then after that, it's like, oh, okay, so we've had the fucking Super Bowl already this year. So <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll gear up for next year's postseason, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. This, this would be the undercard. This is yeah. definitely the undercard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Undercard. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. You sit there looking at these loser ass yeah. fighters. You're like, <laughs> yeah. <I'm> not... <laughs> it's like Fresh Can Joe versus Junkyard Bob. <laughs> Did you see that fight? No, man. I was stuffing my face full of Pat's Doritos. Right. I'm not allowed to have these in my house, man. Yeah. So. <laughs> But that affirmative action one's going to be a big fucking deal because it's basically going to kick out all the admission structures out there. So, and there are going to be some colleges that are going to scream bloody fucking murder Fuck over them. that. Yeah. Well, like some of them are kind of legit, okay? Because, like, you know, you do have your historical black colleges. Yes. It'd be kind of cool if those stayed black. At least I think so. So. You know, and then you have a couple women's colleges out there. It's fine if they want to stay as women's colleges. I don't care. So, you know. For me, no. Okay, so the problem I have with this is, uh, again, play it straight. Okay, yeah, sure. Just look, guys. There is sort of like a common sense to this where we have to look at this and say, like, all right, I know where we've been going with this. Mm -hmm. But there's a part where you have to say, Boys, stay the fuck out of Girl Scouts. Girls, stay the fuck right, out yeah, of Boy exactly. Scouts. Yeah. And the same thing goes with, I don't want to see a penis anywhere near Vassar. <laughs> yeah. So, near. Not, not even on the faculty. Yeah. No, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't even have a problem with that. I don't yeah. mind if they say, like, we want this to be an exclusively female experience. Just like at the same time, if I were to go to um, a traditionally black college and they say, like, you know, we're actually, we're cool not having white instructors, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have a problem yeah. with that. But that also means that you play by other institutional rules, right? Mm -hmm. And my big problem with that is they say, like, I don't know if I'd be comfortable hanging out with a guy, right? It's like, well, where'd you go to school? Uh, well, I went to, uh, you know, Illinois State. It's a whites-only school. Yeah. I mean, like, what does that mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. So, the keynote by Kanye. So, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, it'd be weird. Yeah, it'd be weird. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's so, the... like, okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, it could be one of those things where you don't need perfect ideological consistency on this one. But there's a difference between minority and majority. So, you know, and it's like, all right, okay. So it's cool. It adds to the flavor, the tapestry of what is like American education in some respects. It's kind of neat to have black college, you know. Cool. For me personally, yeah. no, I don't care. Yeah. Right? I don't. Yeah. I don't. But at the same time, that also means, well, don't push for inclusion in certain things where like you know, understand that certain things are going to be the way they are. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just be cool with it. Yeah, just be right? cool with it. Now, I guess the argument is, well, how do you know when it's not cool? I think we all kind of know when it's not cool, you know? It's just like there's always assholes who just want to, you know, draw that line perfectly and say, hey, you're an inch over this line, bro. You know? So. Yeah, but the, Pat, that, that means that. That means that only one group of people gets to be bad neighbors. Yeah, that's true. Right? Because you've got those, you, you, on one side, you got to be like, hey, man, I, I, I know that your weed tree is growing over into my house, and it sits... <laughs> your weed tree. <laughs> <laughs> I have some. <laughs> it's like your, your weed yeah, tree so you is... Well, I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, but my fence is actually at 45 degrees now. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But you know what? That's cool. i got to let that slide. But if at the same time you turn around and that guy's like... Well, you know, your clothesline is an inch over my yard. I'm like, so? Yeah. Like, go look at your fucking weed tree first, man. Yeah. And he comes over there. He's like, you you want me to go get the plants from City Hall? I'll do it. Yeah, you don't want to deal with that guy, man. I get you. So, But you're like, all right, so one of us gets to be bad neighbors, but the other one, it's like, nah, it's, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Let's see. That's the whole thing. You got to police your own, too, man. So... 
Well, it, 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 it's it's like if there was a school out there was that was a whites only school, it would be white people would be like, "Hey, that's fucked up." <laughs> that's <what I> think. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you guys can't do that, man. So you know, I guess. I, frankly, I'd be more inclined. I, I would. I would be less surprised to see people trying to get into whites only university, right? Because they'd be like, "Well." I don't. I'm talking about minorities that are like, well, I don't want to go to school with other minorities. Like, I'm trying to get away from them or whatever. Right. I would be more. I. Now, granted, you of, of course have you know people like. Um, you would have have genuine people there who are like, yes, this is my university for me. <laughs> These are my people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so. No, I came Let here. Let me show you my Richard, tattoo. Richard Spencer, yes, uh, yes. Activities, yeah. Yeah, it's like I don't have to put on an armband. I just roll up my sleeve. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's there. <laughs> I got this in prison. <laughs> so, what are the academic standards of this school then? <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Is it tattoo based admissions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and that's weird. Is is to me again? Like, I don't know if I'd be comfortable hanging out with somebody that went to that university, but I'd have to ask them. It's like, why did you go to whites only university? Presuming, of course, that they didn't have another name for it. Yeah, leave us from you or something. Oh my god! Yeah. So, uh, assuming that they didn't have another name, I'd be like, "Well, why did you go there?" Right. right. Now, I suppose if the you know, answer was, "Look, they're the only school that offered me a scholarship," like, okay, yeah, got okay, it, got it. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, but I mean, possible. asking someone who's black who went to Howard, you know, right? Why'd you go to Howard? It's like, well, I want to be with other black people, you know. And do you find that like, like I see, I don't, I don't find that that harmful. For some reason, I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. But if I flipped it around for one second, I'd be like, no, that's a problem. Yeah, well, yeah. I said, well, I just want to be around white people. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, he kind of stumbled right. on a conundrum here, man. Right, right. <laughs> Which is where I, I'm, I'm stuck in this middle of the only thing my gut says is the only thing that would make it fair is like, well, if it's not good for you, it's not good for them. Or this is just something where I have to, much like all of the things where I'm saying you have to get to know somebody, right? You're like, yeah. On a case by case basis, I guess this makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can right? just ask him. Yeah. You know, and that goes for the university. It's right. like, well, so why does this exist? Right. Why is this a thing? So it's like, well, there's like three of us in the country, right? Because it's uh, like Howard, it's uh, Ball, and um, I know on the Cosby Show they fictionalize it as Hillman, but it's not Hillman. That's supposed it's, to be Howard. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. Oh, there, no. There's there's another one. It ends with man. It's 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 like plug no, not clubman. It's it's clubman. <laughs> you know? I, but I anyway, know yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. there's there's like You're right. Three. There's like three or four. Yeah. So yeah. And like there's tribal colleges. There's like two or three of those. Um, sure. There's what we call uh HSIs, Hispanic serving institutions. So but they're basically schools that just you know, try to attract a lot of Hispanic students who, in my experience, don't really give a shit about that that much. <laughs> you know? No, Patrick, because they're next in line to honorary whites. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it could be honorary, man. You could be full-fledged members, you know, so... Well, that's the thing. Is, yeah, is, yeah when, when you become one, the honorary... Your people are next, comes. man. I'm, I'm convinced. I'm convinced Koreans are next. So, after that... No way. Oh, totally. No way. Totally, man. No way. Dude, you just you're just one generation away from people not closing their windows. <laughs> That's it. That's it. One generation, man. It's all it's gonna take. <laughs> so. uh, possibly. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I will say that generally speaking, Asians have a fairly solid reputation within this country, but so like yeah but you know i don't know man i've learned the thing that there are vast differences between asians out there man Big time. so yeah and i'm just saying that i i know which one's first in line man 
<laughs> yes. Yes. So, ironically, they followed not too far behind by Filipinos, man. I was going to say, actually, yeah. I, I was I was going to basically mark Filipinos as the next Latinos. Maybe. Which puts them next in line. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Because there is some weird crossover, like, where Filipino is Asian, but still not Asian. Yeah. I don't think that's a crossover effect. I would take a look at the difference between, like, Manila and Seoul, okay? Mm. So, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, mm. like, you know, like, Japan is distinctly Japan. So, Japanese will never not be Japanese, you know, kind of thing. Even if they're in America. So, you know, kind of thing. Maybe, maybe five generations down the road. Sure. Okay? But, you know... Like I, I don't know, man. I'm my, like I love my Korean students, so they they are, you know, they, they're just good, solid people. They do hard work. You know, they bitch about the same things that white people do. It's great. They do, yes. <laughs> and they are generally passive, docile creatures. I yeah, but they're they're gutsier than a lot of others. So you know, I got to tell you, man. Like the most passive, docile creatures that I have are hands down my Chinese students. So, well, yes, because you will be taken away if you're. Yeah, I know, man. And I, I, I mean, I know all that stuff now, but when I was teaching them four years ago, I didn't know all that shit. So, you know, I didn't know that the Confucius Institute and fucking Fort Collins was spying on them. So, what other fucking, like, they booted it out, by the way, I think, a couple years ago. So. <laughs> I looked at that. Third. I know, it's crazy. So, have you seen all the shit where they have, like, fucking police stations set up in other countries? That's ridiculous. That's crazy. That's yeah. absurd. So, they found another one in Ireland that was on those China guys' show. So, yeah, they were like, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, the dumb police were like, uh, close this down now. <laughs> I don't even think that's yeah. the one that gets a warning. I think you actually go in there and start, like, kicking doors in. Like, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is the terrifying thought. Speaking of stereotypes, we managed to like actual Irish Ireland cops. <laughs> 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 not not New York Irish cops. So, right, yeah, which, right. Yeah, which I'm familiar with, but yeah. Right. So. <laughs> well, they left Ireland for a reason. Right, exactly. Yeah, so. You get kicked out by those cops. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just, yeah. They look at the other cops like, Will you stop fucking around? It's like, no. And if you ask me again, I'm going to go to another country. <laughs> well, off you go then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, put me in my place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, but now you have the, the rest of the cops who are just kind of... There is a subsector of cops that are just... You give them the opportunity and you say, actually, guys, we need you to go kick ass. Oh, yeah. Like, like, like you, you can have like... It's it's like a classroom where you ask the easiest question on the planet. You have fifty hands and say, yeah. maybe, 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 I'll do it. I'll oh, do it. dude, there's this there's this firefighter channel that I watch on YouTube. It's great. Oh. All he does is little shorts, but they're like funny <clears throat> firefighter EMT kind of things. And he's got a, a hundred videos up there of like you know it's like oh my god we got an EMT call so they're going all slow and stuff like that. And as soon as they get a structure fire, everybody's fighting to go fight it. <laughs> This is what I, okay, so yeah. yeah, this is what I heard. This is what the the said. All right, so they were talking about it. They were talking about different tours. It was like where where the especially like the New York ones where you go on for I think it's like a week or two, right? What do you mean tours? Uh, each tour is basically like where you go in for like a week and you're there on as a cop. No, as a firefighter. Oh, really? Yeah. And so you're there. You're doing 24-hour shifts, basically. I didn't know they did this. Yeah, you're, like, on call the whole time, okay. right? But the rest of the time, you're working out, playing pool, whatever, sleeping, whatever yeah, that sure, is, sure. right? And they asked us, like, have you ever had a tour where nothing happened? Yeah. It's like, not to me, but it's happened to other guys, Yeah. right? Um, but they were saying, like, so what are the things that you don't want to get called out on? Yeah. It's like, it's like a couple of things. So like, if there's an actual fire fire, we're there. Yeah. We do not want to go to brush fires. Those right, suck. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that. It's like because you go out there and you have to lug hose like fucking crazy. Yeah. They said, what's the other stuff you don't like is if there's a storm yeah. and it knocks over like trees and shit. Oh yeah. They hate that because they're the ones that have to go out there and like chainsaw the, oh, the wood. That sucks. Yeah. But it's like car accidents, love car accidents. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. Love car accidents. 
See, I, yeah, this guy was a little bit more like any EMT calls because, like, I don't know if it's true in every jurisdiction, but here, of course, whenever you call an ambulance, you get a fire truck, too. <laughs> and so nine times out of ten, it's nothing. You know, it's like grandma's having chest pains. So we need to take her to the hospital, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. All right. And so, you know, the way that these guys were explaining it, and I've had actually local firefighters kind of tell me the same thing. So they have two different alarms, one for, you know, the EMT call. So they know what kits to grab. Oh, that like makes that. sense. Yeah. And the other yeah. alarm is, you know, like fucking get your shit on. <laughs> and whenever that one goes off, everybody's like, yeah. The dumb is jumped on the truck. Yeah. yeah. Like, waiting there for you. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but I've had soldiers. Soldiers kind of tell me the same thing too. So oh, yeah. I've had people, you know, like I, there's this one guy. My brother-in-law is a little bit like this too. So I have a little bit more respect for guys who say things like this. You know, it's like you know, it was like yeah. So you know, when I got called up to get deployed, I was fucking stoked. You know, it was like it's time to go fuck shit up. That's what I got. That's what I signed up for, man. You know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that from more people than 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 I think. Like some people would be comfortable, like talking about. It, really, you know, just because it's it's one of those things where, like, you know, a lot of the guys that I deal with, you know, they're like, I don't know, didn't have the greatest experience in the military and stuff like that. So, but when you start sure, saying things sure. like that, you're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, no, I did that too, you know? <laughs> so, no, yeah. Yeah, I, I get you completely. And, and the, the whole reason that you don't feel, and it doesn't feel comfortable to say that, is because you don't want to picture these guys as like either anxious to go in there and kill somebody, right? Or anxious to go in there, it's like, oh, look, this property's in trouble, right? Right. Oh, isn't that great? You know? Yeah. Um, but the the fact is, and this is where they said the they like the traffic accidents, right? Was not because like what you were saying, where in nine out of ten times it's nothing. It's because for them, it's one of the chances that they have to actually save lives. Right. Yeah. Right. Do your job. And yeah. that was what yeah. they were saying was they they said that with these guys, there's always this like constant fear of, yes, you know how to do it, you've trained, but. You're a rusty tool if you're not actually right. doing things from time to time. So it's like traffic accident, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I've heard military guys say the same thing. So yeah, especially if they're training combat arms, you know. Shit, yes. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, we actually get to fire real ammo this time. Fucking a. So load up, <laughs> I, open beer. <laughs> you know? well, yeah, I, I, and I can't, I can't speak to this, but my understanding is like, there's only so much that you can get out of shooting at a paper target, or right. yep. you know, and that. Yeah, that's kind of it. So, I mean, I understand. Um, but I can also say, Patrick, without a doubt, it's not for me. No, it's not for me either. So, yeah, I'm trained to do other things. I'm good with those. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going into the to the dangerous world of literature tutoring right. i'm your man you're your man right i'm on point baby <laughs> <laughs> i'm on point yeah. yeah and and so i'm on call at any point and you call me up right you say i need to understand something about chaucer i got gotcha. you i know chaucer's your favorite so. he's not my favorite oh i thought he was nah, he's not my yeah. favorite um but uh i like him but yeah. I, he's not my favorite but the the thing is I still don't have that same kind of firefighter enthusiasm. I'm still going to wake up seven minutes before the lesson starts. And <laughs> yeah. I don't think there hasn't been a day this entire semester where I wasn't cutting it like two, three minutes close. <laughs> You know, and I got to drive a little ways to get to work. So, yeah, you do. You know, and so I just kind of have like this this confidence interval of like seven minutes. <laughs> right. So, and I, I told all the students, it's like, so I drive, you know, and it's sometimes I get here a little early and that's fine. You don't have to get here early. It's like some days I'll be here pretty late. So, you know, let's just call it a 15 minute rule. If there's a 15 minute rule, one of y'all needs to call me because I might be in a ditch somewhere. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's fair. That's fair. <clears throat> but you know, don't worry about it if you're five ten minutes late too. I don't care. So you're paying to be here. You know. So you're paying me to grade your shit. So yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still gonna start on time, but yeah. you know. But yeah, I mean, that's the funny thing is, you know, you're talking about this is this is the world we live in, right? And this is where I do find some attendance policy is a little bit draconian because right if you take this back to 
when communities were a little bit closer, right? Sure. And I could say like, oh, okay, well, all of you live within 10 minutes of this place, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to give you that much leeway to be late, mm -hmm. right? No way. But the expectation is all of you are coming, like you're coming from another city. Students are coming from other cities, mm -hmm. right? All sorts of other things. And God help you if you're actually talking about a place like, san jose and you're going to oh fuck yeah you know san francisco or something like that when you sit there and say like because my bosses and i get it that was their edict because this was the clearest way to figure out if you could fire somebody or not they're like well you need to plan ahead and then you start thinking okay well i'm an hour away mm -hmm. so tell me how many accidents per day should i plan for? right yeah exactly like one how much two? instruction yeah right yeah um <laughs> so do you want me to leave my home an hour and 15 minutes early? Yeah. Are you going to pay me for the time I'm there early? Yeah. Well, the answer is absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right? So So uh, there's Well, there's, and I mean that's okay. That. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can have a draconian policy as long as it has like some it's got to have a couple guardrails on it in the beginning so like people who are late <clears throat> Okay, fine. Here's your verbal, all right? It happens again within a certain amount of time. Here's your first. Yeah. Here's your second. Here's your final, you know, kind of thing. You know, that's going to cure like 80% of your fucking problems. Because if someone's late every now and then, as long as you as the manager aren't sitting there like tapping your watch, you know, and trying to scold someone. Like when I had people come in late, it was always like, hey, you're late. I got to, you know, we got to do the thing. So here you go. Press hard. Three copies. No, no hard feelings. Just, you know. Let me know if you need anything, you know, kind of thing. So, and, you know, nine times out of ten, people would be like, nah, I'm cool. It's just, yeah, fucked up, blah, blah, blah. I woke it's up like, late. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We yeah. all do that. Yeah, don't don't take this the wrong way, bro. So, it's not a it's not, it's not not a rebuke against you. It's a rebuke against the behavior, man. So, you know, those well, are two different things. Yeah, and as long so, as your policy is smart enough to be like, yeah, it's been 90 days. This one washes off. Oh, yeah. it's, 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 as long as it's... As long as it's not like, well, you know, we keep track of these over the year. This is this is you know, accumulated. See, that's like, fucking stupid. Wait, they're, stupid? Yeah, they're just gunning for you then. So, some manager needs to demonstrate to their manager that they're performing discipline upon the troops. So that, that's, we need to talk about accountability. Accountability. Mm. Oh, pets other trigger word. Yeah. Yeah, I got you with both today. Mm. What was the other one I got you on? It was uh... gamification. <laughs> yeah. Gamification. <laughs> accountability. <laughs> Is my other one. Rigor is my third one. All right, right, right. <laughs> These are words that mean nothing. <laughs> well, they sure like the sound of them. Oh, though, yeah, man. they sound tough, but they're fucking, you know, featherweights, fe featherweight words, man. So, fucking Clintonian weasel words. <laughs> <laughs> well, appears something has infiltrated your... <laughs> I like that, man. Your vocabulary. Yeah, it's like managerial weasel words, you know, so epitomized, epitomized by Clintons. So I'm sorry, man. You, you can't... That's the reputation you get when you say it depends on what your definition of the word it is, is, is. Oh, man, you're so right. Yeah. No, he, he deserves a title. So... So and she by association, whatever. So although she did quite a bit, did quite a bit of Weasley wording herself. So. She did, she did, and you know she has she has accomplices that let her get away with it, she does. Um, just like you know Bill did. And again, my whole approach on this is when it came down to it, do I care about what Bill Clinton did? No. But uh -oh. that being said, you got found out. You got found you out. You got to own it, man. Clean. Yeah. You gotta own it. You can't have it both fucking ways. So, but it's just, like he started the whole thing it was like, "Well, I smoked weed, but I didn't inhale." I'm like, so what? Yeah. Like, why would you? Why would you draw that as the as the qualifier to say yeah. that um, this is where you draw the line and this is what makes it okay? Yeah. This is. I'm gonna sit there and say, like, "Am I gonna clutch my pearls because you actually <laughs> breathed in?" <laughs> fucking monocle falling out of my eye you know yeah. what are you kidding me yeah and yeah, yeah you had people on the well it was a slightly different time man you still had that pretty big contingent of the religious right which is basically gone now so the finger wagging right um, well they exist yeah, but, but they're, not, they're not the union that they use no nah, they're irrelevant they've concentrated into like evangelical circles that are innocuous you know they're not the same way that they used to be tiny little pocket republics 
Well, I mean, then there's still like defiantly like, you know, pro-American, pro-Constitution kind of people, you know, yes. so they're not yes. they're not the crazy Tea Party guys who disappeared into the ether. No, so, they disappeared into every grocery store that closed down and was too awkward looking about building to be anything other than a church. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have many of those. What can be anything but a church? <laughs> what are you going to? Are going to break that down into like fifty offices? Right. Yeah. Because exactly. it used to have a Cub Foods. Yeah. Or, you're going to you know... turn it into an old folks' home with a forty foot ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> they can all have their own little cubbies. You know. Oh yeah. Well, guys, we got lines here for refrigerated shelves. Refrigerated shelves. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a crab fisher in a landlocked state. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, those guys kind of. Those guys went away. Um. Or at least went a little bit silent, man. I mean, I know the whole thing with like. See, this is okay. I do have a little bit of fears, you know, about them. What? So. <clears throat> So with the with the with the Roe versus Wade thing, yeah, they're gonna bang on state legislatures for the next couple of years, trying to get into it. So Pueblo is going through this right now. So Pueblo is supposed to get a brand new Planned Parenthood clinic because they lost theirs like five years ago. Oh, and so the city council of Pueblo so went out there and actually passed an ordinance making abortion illegal in Pue Pueblo County. Oh, so really? yeah, which well, I guess in the city, in the city limits or oh. wherever. I don't know if it's the county or the city. It might be the county. So there's, it's it's like a firework stand. You have to drive just right outside, of right? Yeah, <laughs> you got to go down to Trinidad. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it's just right across the border. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> so, but anyway, that, but but that that is distinctly. Against the state constitution, there's an amendment in the state constitution. Yeah, that's true. Right, yeah, that's that right. was actually passed by the voters just the recently. Yeah, uh, I think that's been around for a couple of years. Has it? I don't know. I'd have to look. So I might be wrong because they that. codified it, right? Yeah, but I think that was before the Roe versus Wade thing. Did so, it? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I thought they so, did it preemptively before, like, yes, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So they, they, yeah, you're right. When the initial so. leak came out, they're like. Oh, well, shit. let's let's not make this an issue. Yeah, right? yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, now that I recall. So anyway, that sets them up for a fight, you know. And so, like, but you're going to see that in a lot of state legislatures out there because your evangelicals are going to come back out. They're going to bang on state legislatures rather than the Congress, and they'll probably win a few of them. That's so, fine. Well, no, that's absolutely fine. It's going to, but like as demonstrated by last November. That brings a lot of blue people to the fucking, you know, polls. It does. Yeah. It does. But you know what? It depends on the state, though. It, it does. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Kansas is the, the prime example of this. That's true. Right? Yeah, Kansas was a test case. They, they thought there was no... They were like that. They thought this was a slam dunk, right? Yeah. But they're wrong. And you know yeah. what? That's... I'm absolutely fine with it. My whole argument is that these things should have been uh, pounded out on the state level yeah. anyway. Um, because, again, we're not that far from each other. No, not really. Right. Hmm. Um, now, obviously, I, you know, we're here in Colorado, so this would be like the refuge for um, abortion seekers from Wyoming or... <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah. Or, well, yeah, Nebraska. I Well, Kansas would have been one, but yeah, it got shut down. They're fine. They're so fine. They're, yeah. the, they're the hub and spoke, you know, for... I wonder if it's legal in Utah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. My I guess would be know. no on that. I'm one. not yeah. entirely sure. Um, but you know what? It's it's the the funny thing is Utah is red, but it's not as red as people think it is. It's a different shade of red, man. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a, its own animal. So they almost threw out that one dude. Um. Oh yeah, you told me about this. Guy. Yeah, yeah, it where... didn't work out quite the way that Mickey had predicted on that one, but it would have been interesting. And now that like that Georgia one yesterday, so Joe Manchin is no longer king of the Senate. So right, yeah, which I right. have mixed feelings about. I actually kind of like that guy. So well, um, for that dude, I understand that he walked a very precarious, unique tightrope. Right. Yeah. Um. Now. For me, it probably seems like this is sort of like the floodgates to say, uh, 
well, why don't we go ahead and propose some of our more wacky ideas? Some people that won't get through the house. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> yeah. But then again, I also think that's kind of fine because I think this is the way it's either tone down the wacky shit um, so yeah. that you guys agree on something or, yeah. you know, um, or throw it out there for the express, uh, express purpose of saying, hey, we did this. These guys shot it down. See? See? These yeah, are the bad guys, that right? Lot. That's fine. That's fine. Because... Look, one thing that gets to me, Patrick, and this is where political discourse falls apart, is is when something comes up and they're quick to say, like, both sides do this all the time, all right? They say, like, well, we could have had this, but this house shot it down in 1992, blah, 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 blah. That was led by Republicans or whatever. Blah. I'm like, you know what? You're not, you're a group, guys. Yeah. If it got shot down because you couldn't get it through that group, yeah. And you couldn't make the concessions either way because the whole point of this fucking endeavor yeah. to gather, if it came down to just one person versus one person, why are we electing so many people? Right. right yeah. We just do the constitutional gunfight. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So when the whole purpose of this thing is to have so many different people in one place and say, what works for somebody in Kansas as well as California? Right. That's the whole point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And to sit there and get mad and say, well, you guys shot this down. It's like, yeah, then you should have made a counter offer. Make it better. Yes. Yeah, yeah. try harder, Homer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That means that you need to scratch out certain parts of it. So, like, yeah. when this bill was sent out there and it said, okay, so we like the idea of increasing library funds. But this part about depicting gay sex on all of our money. <laughs> On the back of the three dollar bill. <laughs> it's a constitutional convention, baby. <laughs> it's like you're gonna have to walk it back. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I, yeah. Like I don't know, man. I'm kind of curious to see how this new guy who's flying blue plane does. So you know, there's lots of things that I'm I'm anxious to see how they turn out. I saw that AOC is under ethics investigation. As well she should be, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Well, I don't know what she did, but um, it was kind of interesting that even that boiled up onto the mainstream media that I do watch from time to time. Well, all right. All I have to do, frankly, on this, all you have to do is dig and just say, how much money does she have? Oh, yeah. She's probably pretty well off now. So She's worth a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that money come from? Great question. Yeah. Find out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm not telling you. Oh, but, okay. you know, if the, if an investigation is due, go ahead and investigate. Yeah. Right? And that's fine. And if you find that everything's on the up and up, great. <laughs> Drop it and say, hey, you don't even have to say we're sorry. We just say, like, yeah, everything's above board. Yeah. I don't know, man. It'd be pretty hard to actually nip someone in Congress these days for getting rich off of, you know, like, direct cash contributions. The more likely thing is you pull a Pelosi. So, I like that. Bad joke of the week. So, what did Paul Pelosi do for Halloween? Huh. He stayed at home and got hammered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only saying that because he's alive and well. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, that's just, there's so much, there's so much that is just absolutely stupid that they let slide. And it's amazing yeah. that, that they've managed to cover this all up, right? Because, you know, the, the truest thing that, that I saw on this was, you know, there's a guy who posts the picture and he says, like, all right, I was an investigator for Philly, you know, in Philly for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And he's showing the, the, the place there. He's like, I've never seen a single instance where um, the glass of a forced entry was on the outside of the house. Oh, you talking about Paul Pelosi's thing? Yes. Yeah, I didn't really dive into any of the details on that. It's like, man. fuck off with this, guys. Like, just... Yeah, the, the, this is the thing that, that drives me absolutely nuts. And this is the stuff that's coming out here with, um, like, Twitter is absolutely exacerbating right oh. now. Oh, did you read? Yeah, that's my boy, man. The journalist who dropped that. That's the guy. Taibbi. Yeah, yeah. They, I sent yeah. you his sub stack. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, he's the guy who did all the shit on, um, on the Mar-a-Lago raid during the summer, man. Yeah. So, that guy's good. I've been following him for years. Yeah, this is, this is. Very interesting stuff that came out, but this is the stuff that pisses me off here is, um, so we're having a big time journalist problem right now. 
big okay. time journalist problem, right? And we need to make a decision really fast here, mm -hmm. right? And that decision is, are you guys actually party line guys? Mm -hmm. And we can basically say, that's who you are. Yeah. And we're going to take you as seriously. Or do you still want that reputation of being 1930s hard hitting gumshoe guys? No, I, like, I, I yeah, like because you don't get it both ways. No, man, that ship sailed. So they they've decided. So you you have blue camp, you have red camp. So red camp has media, blue camp has media. Each plane has its own fucking speaker system. So it does. Yeah, and it's gonna stay that way. So and and that's the thing is is yeah. it's time that we expose that. And this is actually the kind of thing that comes out here is like, well. Guys, if you were actually a newspaper, yeah, right, and this is how this situation yeah. was handled, yeah, right, you would be all the fuck over this if you were actually journalists. Yeah, but they're not. But they're I, not. Yeah, no, they're not. You just have to take it for what it is now. Taibbi has been pointing that out for ten years, man. Well, so that's the thing. There's always been he wrote a whole fucking book on it. Yes. So yeah, it's there's, really good. <laughs> there's always been suspicion. People have been saying this, and and look, this has been going on for a long time. Where people are like, well, here's another example of this, right? But this is the kind of stuff where you see like, um, these are alphabet agencies meeting with Twitter, telling them to censor this shit. Yeah. This is wrong. This is the, the stuff where it says, this is the Biden Which administration. Which alphabet agencies were they? The FBI. With Twitter? Yeah. Was that in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't see yeah. that in there. Look at it. And it, that may have come out even a couple of weeks ago, too. But I think that was reiterated there. I think I saw that again. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's... Uh, they No, no, no. It was Because I thought his whole thing was the Biden campaign was doing that. Well, they well, okay. No, no, no. No, what came on that was that they were having weekly meetings with uh, the FBI. Yeah, okay. But we knew that already because they were doing that with Facebook already. Right? They knew for Facebook. They didn't okay. say for Twitter, right? <laughs> that well, came I mean, up. if they're meeting with Facebook, they're meeting with Twitter and YouTube and Why everybody. not? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, everybody so, but TikTok, If we're going right? to be in the fucking neighborhood. You know, yeah, everybody but TikTok. Around. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so. But yeah, that's yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, like when you, when you draw street repairs, everybody pays. Yeah. That's my fucking bitch. <laughs> well, good. We play the rules. You don't get any money. Um, you put it in the middle. <laughs> Rat race. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, um, but yeah, that's the 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 stuff that kind of that the part where the Biden campaign is directly asking for yeah. the censorship of this stuff. I'm like, I can't I can't cite to you which part of that that's illegal, but I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, yeah, I'm almost certain that's compelled speech. Yeah, I I don't know, man. That's a question for a lawyer. Um, my guess is that it's a civil rights violation, and um. I don't know. Donald Trump could sue the fuck out of him if he wanted to. No, I want somebody good to do it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So I don't want the name attached to this lawsuit to be fucking Quaid or or. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? Quaid versus Biden campaign. <laughs> this would so. be. I'm telling you, this would be the perfect, perfect. For the traditional ACLU to prosecute. It would be. If the ACLU wasn't partisan hacks, no. It'd be perfect. Remember when those yeah. guys used to defend, like, KKK dudes and shit? Yeah, my understanding is that the ACLU, there are still some fighters in there. So, I saw a podcast on it a couple weeks ago where that thing's kind of tearing itself to pieces. So... That's too bad, you know, because it, it basically went down the route of the Southern Poverty Law Center. Those and guys, those man. Those guys are a trip. Man. And, um, God. Well, and we, we, all right, so the same thing's kind of true with the Anti-Defamation League, so. Those guys, too. Yeah, 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 although, you know, Kanye keeps giving them ammo. <laughs> because so, <laughs> that is their jam, man. That is their jam. They are constantly on Hitler patrol, so. Look, they're supposed to be. Like, I know, I know, I know. Like, no, I, I'm just saying. Like, like if any, if any group has like matching tattoos, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to get one to join. Friends, yeah, yeah, <laughs> forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, you take a vow, and you're saying like, day or night. Right. If I see, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, right. We have we have our postal service thing, you know, up there. So <laughs> by, by storm or rain or winter's blowing snow, whatever it is. They, if yeah. I find a Hitler, his ass Dark is mine. Mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what were the uh arrest? <laughs> right. What were the um because this this was a true thing. This was the the guys that uh, that post World War II were trying to track down all of the, That's the... the Mossad. That's how the Mossad got started. Well, there was there was a side group, like it was a, a private. That's where they got started. So was, yeah, or, or were they an offshoot or no? That's actually the central thing that they did first. So got it. Yeah. Okay. They started that in 1948 when Israel became a state. So okay, yeah, because I thought there was a side branch of like, <laughs> like the Mossad went this way, and that other group kept going like into like the seventies or something. That, that, like that might be true, but I know they 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 germinate from the same thing, and it was to bring Nazis to justice. So yeah. Roger that. So okay, yeah. okay, which was intertwined with state security. <laughs> so I'm fine with that. Yeah, Israel's a funny duck, man. So yeah, know, even some of my Israelis say so. Yeah, I, I, I've never met one who didn't like not just love it, but also like you know, ah, it's just that way, you know, kind of thing. So you know, it was like you know that it's kind of brutal, man. It's like ah, but it's all it's all good in the eyes of God, you know, kind of thing. It's like yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of them. Uh, she was funny about it. She just said, like, <laughs> she said, like, I can't remember the word she used, but basically her response was like, like, we've got to get over this Holocaust thing. I'm like, oh, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> like, that's a bold statement to say. She's like, well, you know, obviously this was a bad thing. And she said this through very um, distinct English. But she said this and she was like, but there are guys in, in, in Israel that they use it as their excuse for everything. And she's like, sure. it, they use it to excuse all bad behavior. Yeah. Right. And it's just the uniform answer. It's like, Oh, your car won't start. Well, it's the Holocaust. It's, it's like, it's like <laughs> fucking Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That guy. <laughs> and she's just, she's just like, it, she makes it, she's like, it makes them incredibly uh, ignorant or, it totally allows them to excuse any poor behavior on their part because they turn around and say, like, well, did the Holocaust happen to you? Yeah, exactly. It's an easy it's an easy rebound shot on just about anybody. Because so, I have no response to it. I'm like, well, no. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, your natural response is, well, no, but it doesn't matter. You know, then, you know, yeah, exactly. And until the, the point where you just stop and say, you know what, this is for you guys to figure yeah, out. Yeah, this is for you all to figure out. So, yeah. Just, yeah. Just keep it over there, man. So, well, the way that she told me, she was like, you don't understand how Israeli business works. I was like, what do you mean by this? Yeah. Right? And, like, you and I have decried, right, the 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 painful, like, specter of nepotism. And sure. uh, just... That's the only way it works over there. This is just like, like certifications, yeah. uh, degrees, whatever. Yeah. It like, doesn't matter. doesn't yeah. matter. It's just, like... Well, well, this is a friend of mine. Yeah, well, yeah, he's my nephew. So, of course, we're going to turn him into an attorney, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. No, I I, I totally know about that. Yeah. Well, so, I was shocked. I was like... Oh, no, man. So, you and I are a little bit sheltered in this respect because we grew up in America where you have to kind of knife fight for your dollars. You know, there is no other country on the face of the planet that's like this one. So, there really isn't, man. So, like, people point to, like, uber-capitalistic societies like Singapore. In that place, you have assigned fucking housing, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, and it's like, well, and it's based upon what you can afford and shit. And so, but, like, here, it's like, nah, if you can... <laughs> if, does your credit hold? Yeah, okay, cool. You know, you, you can live wherever the fuck you want. So, you know, kind of thing. And, like, you know, we get so much shit from everybody else, but then, you know, when we see, like common practices like that like i guarantee you most of my chinese students were like i in fact i almost guarantee you i'd say 80 percent of them had parents or uncles or somebody who was a ccp member i've had them write oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 it's like yeah. you don't get to go to america yeah. unless you have connections you know kind of thing yeah 
And so, you know, and I mean, I would bang on about that stuff in class, you know, and right in front of them, not even knowing that's exactly what was going on, you know, and crickets, silence, of course, you know, because that's just the way we do them. That's the way we do business, man. And so, you know, um, and like, I mean, even like, like you and I, it was the same way in Japan. Remember that guy that we worked with at the airport? So, oh yeah. 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 We've got a factory for the, 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 yeah, the, the, <laughs> so. the, the son-in-law of son-in-law <laughs> jobs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Of, of one of the Zaibatsu members. It's you ridiculous. It's yeah. like, I was waiting for a male heir to enter my family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I could give him my factory. <laughs> you know, so. It's like, I can't believe you have one of these to give away. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's well, like you could give it away to your daughter. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where the Klingon comes in. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it's, it, is. it would bring great dishonor to my family to, <laughs> to have a girl run my business. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, but here in the United States, man, it's like, it's, it's like, well, fuck yeah. Well, you know, you would bet the shit out of any of the guy like that, you know? So, like... It's just like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll give it to my daughter, man. <laughs> so, right, right. You know? And then if she lost the business, we'd be like, well, you, you shouldn't have sucked at it. You know, kind of thing. And it wouldn't be like this thing. <laughs> it wouldn't be like this thing where it's like, you brought great dishonor to all of us. <laughs> so, Dude, one, one of the, the, the greatest things that I've heard recently, mm -hmm. right, is I do have a Chinese student right now. Oh, nice. Who has no plans unless, so let me put it this way, is... As long as her paperwork can hold, she's going to stay here. Oh, good. She's not currently welcome back because of COVID, right? Right, yeah. So she's hoping that she can get all the paperwork done. And I will be quiet about this, but I will say she said something that I've never heard a, a, a Chinese person admit to before. Mm -hmm. She said, um, in her very unique way, she said, I was like, what do you think about Xi Jinping? Uh -oh. Right? And... She paused and she's like, Baba G. So. Well, she's like, <laughs> he talks like a hillbilly. <laughs> I've heard that too. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that from a student, but yes. Yeah. yeah. From an actual Chinese yeah, person yeah. who lived there, she's like, he talks like a hillbilly. I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. She's like, he does not seem well educated at all. Yeah. I've heard that. She's like, he has, of course, all the degrees and everything that says that he's qualified. Yeah. But if you were qualified, you wouldn't talk like a moron. Yeah. Right. And uh, like I said, I've heard of, uh, you know, analysts say that. I've definitely heard the China show guys say that. Oh, yeah. I've heard them say that, too. Well, because they they, they, they analyze the Chinese. They, they're like, yeah, they're well, sure. this sounds like a dialect from here. But right. I've never heard an actual Chinese person say out loud. Yeah. This guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah, no, I've never heard that either. That is definitely unique, man. Yeah, I, I so I, I I watched this whole bunch of China shit this weekend. So it's been coming out of Blythe School. So what does he have to say? About he this? doesn't have much to say, man. He is kind of like retreated into his own form of TDS. So <laughs> I, I still love the guy and things like that, but yeah, he needs to stop banging yeah. on about climate change. Yeah, he's fucking wrong about. Yeah. It. So, you know, he's, he's, he's wrong. So, I mean, I, like, I don't know if it was last week. It was after I defended there. I actually spent a weekend just kind of, like, catching up on all kinds of bullshit that I hadn't caught in the last few weeks. Oh. Okay, and there was yeah. actually, like, two or three really good things on climate change that I watched. So, one of them was a debate. So, and the debate was amazingly good because these guys kind of agreed with each other on the fact that, hey, man, we need to reevaluate this, okay, because there's oh. a lot of shit... <clears throat> There's a lot of new information that's coming to light. There's a lot of things in the models so that we didn't know about 30 years ago. Yeah. So, you know, we really need to start thinking about some of these things. And so Mark Bing's on about that now. So, um, but anyway, the China stuff was like kind of along the same lines. Um, there was this one guy on there who's really interesting who was, I hadn't, I hadn't come across him before. Um, he's an economist out of, um, I can't remember where, but he's really well-spoken and things like that. But he was talking about like, yeah, you know, Xi Jinping is basically, you know, a boomer dad. All right. Who's wow. like, why can't we make real things around here? 
<laughs> just had me laughing my ass off. You know? so, and it was like everybody thought he was some kind of like, you know, Machiavellian 3D chess playing genius who was playing some 30 year game. And he's just banging on just like your dad does about why we can't have the jobs back in the factory down the street. Oh, my God. I know. And it was like. Wow, you don't even speak Chinese, you know, and you figured that one out. It was pretty impressive. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. So it was good. That's so, great. Yeah. yeah, it's just, just. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do when when you give somebody that kind of power and their discourse is like, son, seventeen years ago they used to make and sell cereal, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. There was a post factory, and that's when we were an actual city. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah, it was a post factory. We all went to the bar in the afternoon and had a good time and watched the game. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and and you just say, okay, great. It's like so. I hate to break it to you, but at that point, um, you guys thought the world was going to be like you were going to continue getting. Twenty four ninety an hour in nineteen seventies dollars <laughs> to stir the oats, right? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like you guys thought that this fucking train was gonna run like this forever. Yeah, huh? you did. Right, exactly. I mean, I don't blame you. And and here's the thing: is you, there's nothing about that that says like that was a good run while it lasted, right? Right. So, but, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's that feeling of nostalgia that kicks in right about at our age, <laughs> maybe a little bit older, you know, so we no, got to be careful stop, when we man. start it's, to evolve it, it into movie talk. No, man. hold on, because, yeah, <laughs> we're about to go into like, but that's not my Indiana Jones. That's not my Indiana No, <laughs> the, one of the funniest things, this is, this is the shit that makes me laugh the most. This is, this is, I had belly laughs this week because... Have you seen what has been happening with basically AI generated art? Did you see the Garfield one? Is that what you're talking about? I didn't see the Garfield oh, one. Okay. But, so, anyway. but the fact of the matter is, the AI generated art is actually good. It is very good, except for if you ask it to draw Garfield. <laughs> it is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I got you there. I got you there. But this was the this was the shit that fucking just made my ribs like sore with laughter okay. because again you have to remember that i do swim in the cesspool misery of twitter right so i get to watch the biggest bitches on the planet who have been then sitting there saying like they've been decrying everybody that lost a good job and they're saying like uh you know what fucking you know Republicans are sitting there bitching about jobs that are being lost. They're supposed to be lost. Automation is going to do away with you and your stupid philosophies. Well, that was the thing was, so in the past few weeks when AI has been showing itself to be artistically competent. Oh, no. It can write articles now. The <laughs> articles and do art. Right, yeah. And it can do that as well or better than the actual artist. Yeah. Now you have these people talking about, Wait a second. This is like <laughs> this is a Terminator scenario right, right now. I'm like, scenario. guys, yeah. guys, you know what? If you just stopped a second ago, just a few weeks ago, and taking your heads out of your fucking laptop asses and said, yeah. you know what? I empathize with people who are in shitty situations. Instead of saying, yeah. we need to be putting these people out of business. That's where ignorance comes from. It's like, yeah. you know what? You're getting that, and you never worked in a factory or lifted one of your fat fingers. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, dyeing your hair a weird color is not a substitute for skill or personality. Fuck off. No, yeah, wearing a jacket with a lot of safety pins in it doesn't really... Fuck you. Here. Yeah. Fuck you. It's a, you know what? This was the other thing. This is when they broke down. Like, what is the actual uh, economic situation of a quote-unquote journalist? Have you ever seen this? It sucks. Well, it's not that it sucks, okay? Mm -hmm. They do make money. Not a ton. Not if you're writing for BuzzFeed or something. So. But none of them need it. The people... Oh, yeah. Well, that's Taibi's point. Most all of them went to fucking Ivy League elite schools, so they're trust fund children. Okay? You know, they're, they're never going to have to lift a finger in order to work for life. They just want to be in a position of influence. Bro, he's been banging that drum for like five years. Well, no, 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 no. I understand that. And and he's absolutely right. Yeah. But it's, it's just... <laughs> that would be fine if what you stopped doing was trying to pretend that you're writing for Americans. Oh, no, you're not. You can go in there and you can write for the Chronicle <laughs> and you can say, well, 
I saw this very homosexual play and it was awesome, yeah. right? I'm not using that as a derogative or, or a, a, a... Just as an example. Just like yeah. you went to a very specialist thing and it worked for you because of your crowd. Right. But if you're trying to say, well, if you're in the middle of Topeka, you're going to love this. Yeah, no, that doesn't work that way. No. So stop trying to represent <laughs> America. Yeah, no. When you have nothing considerable to the American experience under your belt. No. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah, the whole point behind split media. I mean, I just accept it. It's, it's fact that it's split now. Ugh. If you want to find independent media, you got to find guys like Taibbi, so, who's self-supporting. Glenn Greenwald's another one. So yes. that dude's a fucking yes. honey badger, and I don't agree with him on a lot of shit, but nope. I will absolutely pay attention to him. So because you know he doesn't answer to anybody, so he's a gangster. He's a gangster. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a few out there. Andy, yeah. uh, it's an Andrew Asian. Sullivan. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, I know who you're talking about. Ng, I don't know how to pronounce his yeah. last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good. good. Again, I disagree with half the stuff he yep. says, but he's got the chops to say, well, okay, so this scar is where this fucking Antifa guy fucking clocked me on the yeah, head. Yeah, I know what you're talking like, about. Yeah, yeah, you're a journalist. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some lefty journalists. Uh, like, Matt Taibbi is kind of a lefty, so, you know, he's great. Hey, dude, so. there was one guy. There was one guy in that, I don't know if you caught this, there was one guy in uh, on the Democratic side. Oh, that was Kana. <laughs> who went after him he's like this is not what this is supposed to be guys like i agree with this this and this but this is a problem yeah and he even said as a as a biden hack <laughs> I, like well yeah. i mean yeah i guess he came out looking pretty good but nobody in the biden campaign yeah came out of that smelling good well after so. that i was like Buddy, you just made a new fan. Yeah, exactly. Well, I followed him for a while. Have you? Oh, well, okay. he's he, yeah, he's the guy who's actually uh, he's been around a while. He's he's the rep for Silicon Valley. So, but he's popped in on a few podcasts. Like he pops in, and Jimmy Dore hates his fucking guts. So does he? Oh yeah. So huh. because he's not lefty enough. So <laughs> Jimmy Dore's flipped all the way back around to the other side, man. So, yeah, he's kind of on, like, the Richard Spencer side of things now. <laughs> so, Whoa. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's unique company. It, it is unique company, Whoa. man. But he got, he got the teleporter at the end of the love. <laughs> so, I still listen to him, and he makes me laugh sometimes. But it's like, oh, my God, how many times are we going to sit here and talk about fucking war crimes and war pigs and fucking Lockheed Martin, you know, perpetuating the war in the Ukraine, yeah. which is supporting nazis and blah blah it's like bro you went through that teleporter <laughs> so you can come on back i think kanye went through the red one <laughs> so. it was uh, i mean he's if he's doing that it's almost on a time loop where he's almost yeah, going to telefrag himself because he's he still might. in it he might yeah he might telefrag himself this is fucking this is this yeah. is that that math equation with foghorn leghorn <laughs> I better not look. I just might be I in. I might there. be in there. Yeah, exactly. It might be the cat. <laughs> what is that? Schroeder? Oh, Schroeder. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, all right, all right. All right. That's enough opining on that, I suppose. That's a good opining. That is good. Oh. Save it for next time. Okay. So, all right. The hour is seven minutes over. You got a last thought, or we good? No, I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. You I'm go ahead and shut it down. All right, I'm Pat. I'm Jeffrey. Hitting the button. Okay. <laughs>